Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. How's it going? A very special video uh, today where we're going to be discussing Tottenham Hotspur, Hunter Godson's beloved Tottenham Hotspur. It looks like Antonio Conte's time at the club is coming to an end. So who should Spurs look at next in order to replace him? Is it a project manager they need? Is it another ready-made winner? We'll get into all of that on this video. Grizz Khan uh, is with us, Scott Saunders is with us, and Hunter Godson. Um, first of all, do you agree with me that Antonio Conte's time is pretty much done? Yeah, do you remember it was about, I, th I mean, I think it was about six weeks ago when all the Italian journals started reporting that he wasn't going to stay. And I, I know at the time a lot of Spurs fans were like, well, this is a pointless endeavour then. Let's get the new manager in and start building. And then that sort of went away because I think people sort of jumped the gun. He was just making noises about wanting to be back in Italy. He's had a very, very tough year. Everyone knows. Lost, lost some personal friends major surgery his family hasn't come with him to london and um he's, he's lived in a hotel i don't I, I never love when managers stay in hotels because it it doesn't shout long term to me it always shouts i, I would I, love to live in a hotel by the way like, <laughs> no look there's definitely pros there. to living in yeah. a hotel but i mean as a as a manager of, of your club it always suggests there's a time limit to that right um so yeah no i'd agree that it's n now after the him coming back from Italy, I'd say it's one of the worst kept secrets that his contract's up in the summer. He gets a bonus if he gets top four again. You can oh, see, you can see, you can see why he might want to stay till then, and why Spurs wouldn't want to pay five million to get rid of him now. Spurs have a trigger option though, right? They do they have a year tr trigger option. I mean, that would feel incredibly pointless at the moment. I was going to say, why why trigger a year option on yeah. someone like Conte? Unless you're going to unless you're going to splurge five hundred million exactly. in the summer, which they aren't. They just aren't. They might get a couple of good players. I think centre back will be addressed, which is huge for the club in general because I can't watch overall the huge same flop. <laughs> It's really hard to say because when he came in, we were a mess. We just were a complete mess. It was... A, oh, yeah, you It were. was... And they'd been spiralling for a long time. We'd taken ages to come to the Nuno decision, which was clearly the wrong decision. And then he came in and he steadied the ship. And the back, the run at the back end of last season, he deserves massive credit for because he basically found a way to win with a team that I don't think was ready to get mm. top four. Right, so he overachieved. I agree with him there. But it also came down to Arsenal falling away, a couple of other teams falling away, and Spurs finding their form last 10 games of the season. Now, this season, we haven't got better. We haven't progressed. The football's getting worse. Um, and he looks, t he looks tired. Completely fair, fair enough, by the way. I don't blame him for wanting to go back to Italy. Um, but yeah, I think with his contract up in two, three months... It is time to start thinking about the future. I'd do it now, but I understand why it might not happen now. I think Spurs have a bit of an identity crisis, to be honest. Definitely, like, and that's this is part of it. Yeah, um, they've been trying for a number of years to make their club. Obviously, Daniel Levy has been trying to make them this massive global yep. entity. And I think you can look at the profile of managers that they've gone for, like oh, Jose Mourinho, yeah. perhaps not Nuno, no. um, and Antonio Conte, who've been proven winners in other countries and and in England as well and think we're one of those super clubs now we're going to get a super club manager yeah. to come in and make us win things obviously the investment though doesn't match that ambition and I think Mourinho's found that and he's been frustrated with it and Antonio Conte that's part of the reason why I think he's frustrated that he's not challenging for titles he wants to be challenging Definitely. for titles and he wants a team who are capable of turning up like that each week and challenging at the top and Definitely. I think he doesn't feel like his own ambitions are matched and Spurs have a decision to make about what they do now because are they going to try and pretend that they're the super club? Yeah. No offence. Um, are they going to try and pretend that they're the super club or are they going to try and do it the way they were doing under Pochettino and punch above their weight in a sense? I think the, the issue like, is that I, I would say that if Antonio Conte thought that when he came in, mm. then that's on him. Because yeah, no, I don't think Spurs have ever right. shown that that is what they're going to well, do. Well, they pay him a lot of money. Though. Yeah, they pay him a lot of money. but well, We pay a lot of managers a lot of money. You pay a lot of money, but then you cut back on what you're spending on players and what yeah. you're paying players. Yeah. It, you know, it's, it's, it's just all about, for Spurs, it's all about giving this look of being that super club, like yeah. you said. But they've never really followed through with it. And I would say Antonio Conte knew what he was coming into. Yeah. I would say that Antonio Conte knew that it was getting Spurs in the Champions League. And at the time of recording, they're fourth. Yeah. And obviously, 
they made it last season. Mm. So I don't think you can ever say that Antonio Conte was a flop. I think what you can say is that people got carried away by what he might be able to achieve. Definitely. And so set the bar too high in terms of and what he I think if you ask Antonio Conte, he'll say he was a flop in his heart of hearts because I don't think Antonio came to Spurs with the ambition from a pers- from Conte's personal po- point of view to get them in. Then he should have done his homework. To conti- he should have exactly. done his homework. This is my point. So one of them, either the owner or Conte, didn't do their homework. Mm. Because you don't bring in Conte and not back him, and Conte you don't bring come in to a club like Spurs that you're expected to win something. We keep reiterating that fact. Spurs needed to win something under Conte. Otherwise, I consider it the a definition flop. of something but though is important. Like I want to ask Hunter this: Is an FA Cup or a League Cup enough? Because I know we're, I've had this conversation with Spurs yeah. fans on this channel for years yeah. about whether it's actually worth winning a League Cup because it's not one of the big. Yeah, Champions League or Premier League titles. How important is that? I think now it's it's got to the point where, you know, it's all well and good getting into the Champions League. People understand that financially it's so much more important for the club to get the Champions League than to win a, a domestic trophy. But for the fans, it's painful just doing that and not committing to those. And so to get, as a manager, to get fans on side, it is important. It's really important because fans want to feel like it just feels like you're building towards something, picking up those trophies. Look, look what, like, United's, the feel around United was very good, obviously, before the Liverpool performance. The feel around United after winning that trophy was, right, we can, we're building here, we're going on to something. As Klopp did in his first season at Liverpool, it just gives you that, that idea that it can happen. And it's been a long time, I mean, 15 years since we last won a trophy. Uh, and it, it was way more Mickey Mouse back then, <laughs> I'd say, than it is now. Um, but you're right, it, to go back to your point, it, it, we have an identity crisis because Levy has signed these managers on an idea from 10 years ago, from when he re- he really wanted Mourinho. I think after Harry Redknapp, he really wanted Mourinho. And we he tried to sign him. We weren't big enough at the time. Now we've got the money, the weight of the club, the global, you know, the F1 deal, the NFL deal, the Beyonce stuff, whatever. We are still... That that side of it is making lots of money for the I'm club. Still upset it's, they it's didn't do the cheese room. <laughs> <laughs> really Look, so am I. Look, I'd love a little bit of cheese at the game, but um, that side of the ga- that side of the stadium has worked, and we are in ne- the next two years. I think it's net profit. We start earning money again, and, and that's when Spurs should be able to go out and mm. start putting the money on the table for players more. But this idea of well, we want the win now, managers for a couple of years doesn't really work and I don't think it really works at any club anymore in at the top level of the game if you look around the Premier League now the best clubs they're not they're not with win now managers they're with managers that build over time you build an identity and Spurs for for years you know Levy's been the sort of source of everything goes through him he's hired these two managers he hasn't he's given them money but he's not backed them in the way that they clearly need to be backed or they needed a much stronger squad to come into already because when I look at the squads that Conte had at Chelsea Inter um, and Juve I it's mean very it's incomparable yeah. it's incomparable they're brilliant brilliant filled with world class talent and we've got two m- two yeah. maybe three world class players and then you look at the current where we are right now well the director of football might be banned from football for two years in the next three months the manager doesn't really want to be here and once again, Levy's out there searching for a new manager because the director of football might not be allowed yeah. to pick him in two months. It's not, and we have no identity on the pitch. And that is seeping to the fans now who are thinking, well, why am I paying 70, 80 quid to go and watch players every week? Why am I going to get my season team, which is going up again? But that being said, we sell that season, that, that stadium out every week basically 60,000 people come to watch the football so the, the product is working in terms of the event of the stadium that's worked but on the pitch we've, yeah, we'll, we've yeah. lost a, we've lost a bit of identity I think we've kind of set the scene nicely provided the context behind all of this so in terms of managers being linked with the Tottenham job sure. uh, former boss Maurizio Pochettino seems to be in a lot of people's minds the favourite to come back would you have Maurizio Pochettino back? And I'm interested to see what the other guys think about yeah. this as well. Yeah, there's a big part of me that has that's like never go back. And has it changed enough? Has Levy changed? Does it work with the director of football? I think 
I would have him back because I just want that feeling of playing that high intensity football with someone who I know loves the club, which has been an issue the last few years. Is just that finding that someone who actually wants to be here. And he has very made it clear that it's, he loves Spurs still. He would like to take the Spurs job again. That appeals to me because it's just that feeling of, right, he really wants it. And we know how mad he was the first time he was here, putting CCTV up around the train. Everything was monitored. He got the young players playing better. He improved players. He moved on a lot of players that didn't need to be there anymore. That's what we need to happen again now. There's a lot of players who are, who are still at the club that really shouldn't be. And he has the ability to do that. Has enough changed? I understand why people say he shouldn't come back. Grizz, if you were a Spurs fan, would you be interested in the return of Pochettino potentially? I can imagine, yeah, if I was a Spurs fan, I can imagine it. But from looking from the outside, it's a no-no for me. Mm. But obviously, I understand the sentiment and everything else. If I was a Spurs fan, um, you know, we had it with, with Kenny. Uh, and then there was clamour for Rafa. And I was one of those ones that, I, I would, you know, at the time I said I wouldn't want him back. What's changed? Yeah, not enough. Pochettino left because of the state of the squad needed in reinvestment. Uh, so he needed investment, overhaul of the squad. Again, they've got a fairly, fairly unbalanced squad. Um, quite a few old players in there again. Needs investment. None of these. Well, we don't know. We don't know if any of these are his players. If you know what I mean, like you know his type of players. But surely, a man of the calibre of Pochettino will want his own style of player. We're not... I, I, I don't believe he used to play this system as well. Would he play 5 nah, two? Nah. He, he switched... He, so what used to happen was he switched mid-game, in-game. He never started with three, but often Dyer would drop in. Um, to so that's totally different to the way Conte plays it. Yeah, yeah. Which is three centre-backs, two DMs. Yeah. Well, we need know. to... I, I, I don't think I that formation to works too much in modern football, I have to say. I, I think you can get really some I'm so re- far. I'm ready to really lay the boot in Spurs. Like, uh, we're talking about all these names and everything, Marie, like Pochettino and Luis Enrique and Almiron. I don't see... I don't see a... Uh, I don't see a, a, a manager that's just on the verge of becoming world-class or great taking the Spurs or job on right now under the circumstances, I must add. I genuinely think, and I was thinking about it the other day, I was speaking to a few Spurs mates on a, Sp- on a Spurs channel and I was saying, I'm not joking, Michael Carrick. It's a, you need a yeah, project Spurs manager. Spurs fans have spoken about You need Michael a project Carrick, manager to, to start from scratch. No, you're smiling. You're doing that He's cheeky, doing very well with right? Middlesbrough. It but is on the basis, but, but, though, of like six months. Yeah. I get it. And Michael Carrick, yeah. when he was at Man United, people were saying he couldn't coach. Yeah. <sighs> He's doing a fantastic coaching job. If you look at the identity, what we discussed, yeah. the identity of Middlesbrough has changed drastically if you speak to Middlesbrough mm. fans. Just the way they're playing football in the championship. No, they play very nice And football. granted, it's the championship. Mm. But the, where I'm coming from is, if you don't get top four, mm. um, and I know time of recording, you are fourth. So, but, but the way the season's going, if you don't get top four, Conte leaves, huge question marks over your captain and a s- couple of star players yeah. that were there because of Conte. Yeah, yeah. I don't see a... a, a I don't see a huge name coming. I, I there. think with uh, with Carrick, I think it is a big risk, um, given his he's doing very well. But you're appointing him on the basis of like six months. Yeah. It might be a bit too much of a jump for now. I think so. But I also look at Pochettino, and I think is he a bit yesterday's man? And is there a bit of is there so much spite from Spurs fans at the moment? Then they're thinking this is awful, and they're just clamoring for what they had before. Yeah. I don't know if Pochettino, great coach but maybe as his time come and gone. And I think that is the worry that I would have if I was Spurs. Has Pochettino's stock gone up much since he left Spurs? I would, I would argue it I would argue it hasn't. I would argue well. it probably hasn't because he's been in for other... I think he wanted the United job, didn't get it. Real Madrid, that might that might come up over the next few yeah, months as well. I can't see him But being will, Madrid will Madrid go there? Nah. Mm, probably not at the moment because the, the PSG job he had, the PSG fans don't like him at all. Because no, obviously don't. he had that front three and like the, the style of play that Poch likes to play is you know high intensity and that starts from the front. And when you have yeah, Messi and Mbappe work. and Neymar, but also it's not the thing, is it? PSG fans the other day saying, oh, maybe he wasn't that. Maybe he wasn't the problem. I mean, that club... He as soon as they go out of the Champions League, exactly, they just want exactly. to burn sudden, everybody. Exactly. All of a sudden, Poch wasn't the problem. Issue. Oh, it's the players that we need to rebuild. You're right. It was a bad fit. And really, they should have looked at that. So apparently and he they, should have looked so at apparently that. So apparently they do have a great relationship in terms of 
uh, Levy and Pochettino. Yeah, still, they do right? still. Yeah, I think again, it, is that a good thing? I Scott? think it does happen. Like for for me, I think this will happen. I'm not saying it necessarily should happen, but what the Spurs manager that comes in next, especially if they don't get top four, is probably going to be walking into is they have to. And maybe this is a good thing. Maybe it's a bad thing. Mm. Goalkeeper, you need to replace. 100%. You need a centre back. Yep. You need two. a creative midf- two centre backs. You need a creative midfielder. The most important. And you position. might need a striker if Harry Kane decides there's to a, go. There's a and good chance. And that is your entire core of your team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The other thing though is, oh, well, like you, you mentioned, though. you mentioned the relationship between Poch and Levy. Mm. I don't think that's healthy. That they like that. Yeah. Because one of the big things for Spurs fans has been that the way Levy operates and the way the ownership operates yeah, the football yeah. club has held them back then you're going to bring in somebody yes, who's probably more willing to go, actually, mm. I know this yeah. is the status quo, this is how it's going to go, I'll, I'll live with it. Maurizio, it wasn't someone so else maybe haven't got 50 million this it, summer to spend. Oh, okay, no problem. It wasn't so much that. Their relationship was good. Like it wasn't as close as that. <laughs> maybe it should have been problemo. <laughs> po- Poch had, look, part of the problem was that Poch wasn't willing to settle mm. for when it came to transfers. He, he wanted this player, this quality player, and he didn't want anyone else. And so he, he shot himself in the foot doing that as well. I, look, if you're saying, as one of the options, would I take him back? Yes, I would take him back. But there are other options as well. Let's talk about some of the other options. Luis Enrique has been linked. Yeah. Is this a job that Luis Enrique would be interested in first? Of Apparently, all? yes. That's what was being reported. I think the Independent reported yes. But he hasn't been spoken to. He just would be interested mm-hmm. in it. I don't understand this one. I have to say, like, I, I, I like Enrique, but his his CV essentially reads, managed to get the best front line in world football and do quite well in them. And then that's it. Like, his his time at Barcelona was good. And then this post post that, I don't, Spain, I don't think anyone can sit there and say they enjoy watching Spain play, can they? You, Spain don't, play, you don't want, you want somebody who's going to absolutely entertain you that yeah. or, like, their football is high energy and everyone gives everything Spain are, were past to death team and I think Luis Enrique in terms of his profile is more along the lines of Conte Mourinho no. not, not saying the football's the same but he's that kind of top coach big name <coughs> that they've been trying to appoint over the last few years I, I like him I like the way that he tries to play football I like him as a person he's quite weird mm. I, I can get into that um, I like that he started a twitch to talk about <laughs> results it's just if one of my main criticisms of this Spurs team is a lack of technical ability. Oh, and we yeah. are talking about the guy who needs technical players all over the pitch, a false nine, the wingers coming inside, everyone can score from every position, and you have to be really tight in your passing. Spurs don't have that. So you, for me, you would be restarting the squad, yeah. basically. You are rebuilding from, from zero with Enrique. And I said, I said, I like him. I do. And I think... Uh, he goes on to have a good good career, but I don't I don't want Spurs to become a team that passes for passing sake, and I don't know if that works in the Premier League at the moment. Mm. You was going to say something on Enrique? No, uh, I was going to say something really <laughs> not nice. Go on. I've said I've said not enough nice things about We're Spurs. Brian's here, but I know I, I I genuinely th- I genuinely think like Scott was talking about sort of his style and everything. I think Spurs need to dump that notion and idea about. You know, we need this, we need that. You need a trophy. If you're still going to be talked about as a big club, you've got to get away from, oh, we play a certain way, we but have a massive stadium. With we tried under the who? win now. Jose Mourinho and Conte right, are, so the, are the only, so then you're arguably saying, the only so, so two. So you're saying the, the next, what's the next option? So now you have to rebuild. So now, yeah, but now you're admi- It's like what admitting. Arsenal did. Right. And yeah. therefore, the comparisons with uh, Michael Carrick not directly. Michael Carrick has played under some of the greatest coaches this game's ever seen. Right? <laughs> Just <laughs> like Arteta. Are you his manager? <laughs> He's <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't look. I think Michael Carrick's a very good coach. I think it's too... I agree I with Scott. It's too long, soon. Long I don't know if you was going to go on to Thomas, the likes of Thomas Frank, the up-and-coming coaches. I, I don't think Thomas Frank should... T- if I was Thomas Frank, I would wait for a Better yeah, job. but what what what, what level of job, job is Thomas yeah, Frank yeah. ever? But this is he's not going to get a United job. He's not going to get I, a. This I, is I don't think he would. For so. me, this is the issue, and this is what I'm talking about. Spurs are trying to jump into this like group above, like the super clubs, mm. and I think I think they're kidding themselves a little bit. That's my point. And they need to realize where they are. They they they've got fans who are really dissatisfied with the football. They yep. need to hire a coach who will entertain them. Yep. And they're going back to that's why Poch is 
kind of the one 100%. that a lot of people want. It's like also the closest we've come to winning anything in a v- it, like consistently for a long, long time. And Grizz, with the uh, you, you say you would need to win a trophy, even. I agree, I think they do. But even like a League Cup is not going to satisfy them. I think what Spurs fans want is value for money with their season ticket. Mm. And that should be the metric of how but then, judge But this. that's why Michael Carrick, for me, in my opinion, makes sense. Because that's but a total refresh. Do you not think like West Ham is like the next step yeah. for him? And Tottenham's, too, Tottenham's a yeah, level above. Tottenham's a big, a it's a big job now. It is, I, I agree, but... Or are you trying to put it's Tottenham or West Ham? I, 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 I may have at some point. Don't but, you. But, 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 okay, you've yeah. won me over in terms of I agree with that, right? But then again, it comes down to what do they want? Because Hunter gives me the impression from being a Spurs fan, he just wants to enjoy football again. Yeah. As opposed to, okay, because Conte was, for me, the last chance saloon in terms of yeah. winning a trophy. But that's what it felt like. we all like. said it, didn't we? Yeah. We said if Conte can't win a trophy with Spurs... Yeah. No one's going to win a trophy with Spurs. Well, I got to say, if you've you've all watched us play football. We're nowhere near winning a trophy. Oh, it's awful we are nowhere you guys near winning a trophy. And that's him. That's, got no that's him after putting all of Spurs. the putting all the. Um, he has these passing structures, and then he wins with them, or he doesn't win with them, and that's how Conte plays. I actually think now, can you win in the Premier League with that if you don't have the best team out there? I don't know. I think three four three four three has a real limit. To it, unless you have if, brilliant, if brilliant, someone, brilliant. If someone players. like Eddie Howe wasn't in a job, right? Someone like that. If if uh, Potter didn't take the Chelsea job, yeah, I would have taken Potter something in a heartbeat. Like I, I, I think I'd, he's that level. He so Deserby, kind of Thomas Frank, I, yeah, I think I think are destined there, for great things. He's, I, I, I know Deserby's not on the, the favourites, but before he came to um, Brighton, he was having a wonderful time. Brilliant brand of football. Spurs should have been looking at someone like him before his buyout at Brighton is small. Mm relatively um, I think it's someone Spurs should definitely be looking at Gus but Poirier. whatever it <laughs> whatever it happens <laughs> he's what, the Greece manager at the moment whatever so. oh, is he yes he is yes he wow is. whatever what happens I'm, do- I'm done with this win now manager I don't think it works with the squad that we have with the money we have available Agreed. I don't think we I don't think we could ever do it I don't like that we became it I don't like the brand of football that it leads to I don't like the way that the club is spoken about by the people who are forced to be there with all this money they're paid. So I just, I think what Spurs fans want now is someone to rebuild who wants to be there, who wants to play a more exciting brand of football because if you're going to be paying that much money, you really need to be at least entertaining people for yeah. five minutes. It's about having that feeling just yeah. kind of being linked with your club again. And, yeah. and I know what you mean because I, I lost it when Emery was in charge of Arsenal. Yeah, exactly. So I know exactly what you're going through. It's apathy. You got there as well. I got there as well. My only other question for Hunter, I agree, but if Spurs are not with that lack of a core that they need to address, if they are not prepared to put the level of investment in that their rivals will, and I include Newcastle in that, will you take entertaining football and come in sixth or or seventh every year? I think it's impossible to say at the moment, but I think if you're going to start with this idea of entertaining football, and a brand of on the pitch football again, then you have to be willing to come six seven. Well, what's which the other I choice? Am. Playing shit football and still finishing six seven like I think <laughs> they will true. next season. I'd include Tuchel in that. Well, we as well. we, I think we Tuchel might. Too much of a risk to go for. I, d- I mean, look, I've said this before. I, I like Thomas Tuchel. I like what he did b- <laughs> mainly before Chelsea. Although I think uh, he obviously did very well with Chelsea to win the Champions League. But before Chelsea, he was a high pressing in your face. He played four three three. Now, that brand of football, I would like to see at Tottenham. And I don't. I think with the current batch of players, we're only about three away from playing pressing football. But... Do you think if Harry Kane leaves, Richarlison is the ready-made? Absolutely not. But <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, if, if Harry Kane leaves, then this whole debate is completely null and void because we're, we're at start again level. Mm-hmm. You have got probably the best striker in world football top three top and five. the what he brings to Spurs you just can't you, you'd need three players to replace that yeah. you can't put value in it yes you can 80 million well that's what Scott <laughs> that's what Scott's Daniel Levy I can. Don't, look, I'll say this I don't think 80 millions uh, I think that's probably right in terms of the price of him but are Spurs going to ask for 80 million yeah. not a I chance not a chance but Harry Kane's right. got just over 12 months left on his contract he mm. does indeed um, guys fantastic discussion thank you so much uh, we touched on a few names Pochettino Enrique 
uh, Thomas Frank was mentioned as well. One I'd like to chuck in, actually, mm. if I was just to say, styles of football. Paolo Fonseca at Lille, they're playing really nice football. And Roger Schmidt, Benfica, both play really good football. They're, they're supposedly building squads together. I think that's what Spurs should be looking at now. Forget this idea of win now. It doesn't work with the squad that we have and with the investment that we're putting in. I just don't think it does. It's all about rebuilding at mm. Tottenham. I think we can all agree on that. Um, leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And let us know in the comments who you think Spurs should be targeting. There are lots of names out there. Uh, we've just been through a few uh, that were sort of towards the top end of the favourites list. But Michael any other Carrick. names? Michael Carrick. Throwing, well, Michael Carrick's <laughs> nowhere near the favourites. <laughs> uh, but Grizz uh, seems to be representing him uh, this week. Um, what kind of commission are you on? <laughs> can't disclose that. <laughs> <laughs> Be a breach of uh, confidential information. Yeah. Uh, guys, thank you so much. Subscribe, like, leave your thoughts in the comments and we'll be back soon with more. Cheers.